A very good morning and a warm welcome to each one of you as you are watching the sermon on YouTube. Today is the fifth Sunday in Lent and uh, our theme for this morning's meditation is the wisdom and power of God are most clearly revealed in the weakness and foolishness of the cross. The wisdom and power of God are most clearly revealed in the weakness and foolishness of the cross. We'll be meditating on 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, 25. In 1964, a freighter carrying 6,000 sheep capsized and sank in Kuwait's harbor. With so many dead animals underwater, Kuwaitis worried that the rotting carcasses would pollute the water. A way had to be found to lift the ship and remove the sheep before the entire harbor was contaminated. And so a Danish engineer, Karl Kroyer, was called to do the job. And he remembered a comic book in which Donald Duck and his nephews raised a sunken ship by stuffing it full of ping pong balls. And the idea was worth a try. So Croyer had 27 million polystyrene balls injected into the hull. It worked and the ship was afloat and thanks to Donald Duck. Now Relying on the engineering prowess of a cartoon character sounds not only comical, but also downright foolish. But sometimes that which seems foolish to us is actually the wisest. Take, for instance, the cross of Christ. Who would have imagined that God would pour himself into humanity only to die by crucifixion to save humanity from sin. Surely there were more sophisticated options that were open to him. But Paul writing to the Corinthians says, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And so we come to our theme for this morning's meditation. The wisdom and power of God are most clearly revealed in the weakness and foolishness of the cross. The Christian choice of the cross as a symbol of their faith is surprising when we remember the horror with which crucifixion was regarded in the ancient world. Paul's message of the cross or proclamation of the cross was to many of his listeners foolishness or even madness. The logical question was, how could anybody worship a God, a man who was justly condemned as a criminal and subject to the most humiliating form of execution? The question that faces each one of us is also the same. What does the cross mean to us? Does the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of Christ affect my life in any way? Or is it something that we think of as foolish? So let's look at the text. The message of the cross appears as foolishness to the unbeliever. Paul says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And what is the message that Paul is talking about? The message of the cross is that Jesus Christ came into this world as a human being to offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of all humanity, 
that all those who believe in him will receive the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. This offer of forgiveness and life eternal can only be individually appropriated by faith in Christ. The other side of the message is that those who reject the message of God, Son, make Jesus out to be a liar and therefore they will be judged. So Paul says, for, the, for those who are perishing, the message of the cross is foolishness. How can any one person's death affect the rest of humanity? Or how can anyone receive salvation through the cross, which is a symbol of death? Should not we do good works in order to receive salvation? Or is it not foolish to believe that salvation comes through the cross? And these are all questions that come in the minds of people. The point that is made is that this message is concerning a crucified Christ. The recipients of Paul's message were also ordinary people who were not considered as wise of the world. And Paul's own preaching was not characterized by the cleverness designed to impress the audience. He says, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So the cross is the power of God. Power of God unto salvation, power of God unto eternal life. But the cross is also foolishness for those who are perishing. Those who reject Jesus and the cross are blinded to the saving power of the cross and are destined for destruction. For believers, the cross is the power of God. We, those who have believed in Christ and have appropriated the forgiveness made available by the cross and by our personal faith in Christ, the cross is the power of God. How is the cross, which is a symbol of weakness and death, give power to those who are being saved? The cross gives us power by showing us that death is not the last step for us. Jesus defeated death on the cross by rising up on the third day. And therefore we are given this hope of the resurrection, a living hope that is imperishable, that cannot be spoiled, which is kept in heaven for us. And so there is the hope of the resurrection. It is the power of God because death has been defeated. It is also the power of God because God's righteous anger against human sin has been propitiated by the offering of his own son on the cross and therefore he is able to forgive our sins because the penalty has already been paid. The cross is the power of God because at the cross the penalty has been paid. The cross is also the power for us because through this the powers of darkness have been defeated. All the principalities and powers put together wanted to keep Jesus down. But Jesus defeated all the powers and principalities and he rose again on the third day. So there again the cross is the power of God. The cross is the sign of victory over all the powers of darkness. And that power is available to each one of us. And finally, the cross is also symbolic of the transformative power in our lives. It is because of the cross that our lives can be transformed. We are being transformed in the likeness of Jesus because of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And therefore, Paul says that to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Power over death, power over sin, power over the punishment that was due to us, power over our own lives, that our lives are being transformed. Paul then quotes from Isaiah 29, 14, which was written to Jerusalem in its original context, but something which Paul now uses to address the Corinthians. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Aristides, a 6th century BC Greek statesman, says that on every street in Corinth one met a so-called wise man 
who had the answer to humanity's problems. The wisdom and intelligence of this world is no match for God's wisdom and intelligence. Even though through human eyes, the cross is a symbol of weakness, it is a cross that will be the power of God for those being saved. Paul carries on by saying, where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? The wisdom of God cannot be compared to any human wisdom. The contrast shows the parallel between the vulnerability and the fragility of time spent by devising strategies for self-preservation, self-enhancement, and self-aggrandizement, as opposed to seeking to align ourselves with our will and our wills for the divine purpose. Human philosophies and ideologies, no matter how great, will end in futility. We need God's revelation in order to know him. But the problem is with human philosophy. Whenever it tries to answer the big questions of life, where we have come from, where we are going, why we are here, what's right, what's wrong, human wisdom oversteps its bounds and bites off more than it can chew when it tries to tackle those questions. If you want to know the ultimate meaning and purpose of life, the source of happiness, joy, fulfillment, and peace, we need to look beyond human wisdom. No matter how much philosophizing is done, human wisdom fails short in giving us the answers to life. C.S. Lewis once said, no arrangement, no clever arrangement of bad eggs will make a good omelette. The message of the cross is there for foolishness to the wise of this world who are perishing. But for those who of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Jesus has defeated death on the cross by defeating death itself and rising up on the third day. Human sin has been propitiated by the offering of his own son on the cross. The powers of darkness have been defeated at the cross and the cross is the transformative power in our lives. So there we see on the one side, it is foolishness to those who unbelieve, to those who do not believe, and it is power to those of us who believe. In the second section from verse 21 to 25, we see Paul reminding us that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. By God's design, human wisdom did not lead to the saving experience of God. The world cannot understand God through its own wisdom. And therefore we need revelation. The wisdom of this world is fallible, temporary, short-term and self-absorbed. The wisdom of, the, uh, of God on the other side could mean wisdom revealed in scripture or a transformative wisdom which reverses the values of the world. It could be divine wisdom that God reveals himself. Wisdom could be the prophetic critique or the wisdom of God as grace freely given. God was pleased, however, through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. What was it that Paul preached that was considered as foolish? It was preaching Christ crucified. The idea of a suffering and dying Savior was hard to accept both by the Jews and the Greeks. The Jews were always looking for a political Messiah who would come with power and authority and therefore they were looking for signs and wonders and basically power from the Messiah. 
they could not cope with the idea of a suffering servant and so the jews demand signs to prove that jesus was indeed the messiah the greeks on the other side were great ones for wisdom they look for insight in the workings of this world and how to relieve humanity of its problems the greeks always boasted about their knowledge and their philosophies but philosophies at the end of the day will remain just that they will be great ideas and thoughts but they do not have the power to save a human being from sin paul then goes on to say that we preach christ crucified a stumbling block to the jews and foolishness to the gentiles the cross is a means through which god's presence and transformative power is mediated to us the proclamation of the cross showing christ as the one who was wounded humiliated and done to death humbles us paul therefore talks about salvation as a continuous process not something as uh, that we have already arrived at the cross on the other hand acts as a stumbling block to the jews because they cannot cope with the idea of a suffering messiah and the gentiles because they find it as foolishness to put our faith and trust in a man who was crucified it was an affront to their intelligence and wisdom and when they were asked to trust in a crucified christ they were always seeking after what would bring them success in politics in the court room philosophy or in everyday affairs of trade love or the household for all those who believe christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god bonhoeffer says wisdom or grace without the cross is what is sold on the market like a cheap jack's wares cheap grace means justification of sin without the justification of the sinner forgiveness without requiring repentance baptism without church discipline the world goes on in the same way grace without the cross grace without jesus christ for both jews and greeks whom god has called the cross conveys god's power and god's wisdom for the cross does not rest on signs nor on manipulative devices which entice belief nor is it based on human wisdom to master life but rather on god's wisdom for the foolishness of god is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of god is stronger than human strength and so my dear brothers and sisters the challenge for us is the crucified christ a stumbling block to us is the cross foolish to foolishness to us is the cross a stumbling block to us is the cross an affront to our wisdom and our intelligence are we trying to solve humanity's problems by our own wisdom are we looking for signs like the jews in order that we may believe or is it the power of god is it the power of god and the wisdom of god available to us to those who believe in him the message of the cross is very simple we recited every sunday christ has come christ has died christ has risen and christ will come back christ came into this world to identify with us and live like one of us christ died so that we may be forgiven by taking on the penalty of sin christ is risen therefore death and sin and satan and all the principalities and powers have been put to put to flight have been defeated and christ will come back which is our hope uh, for the future and therefore we are called this morning to believe in the cross maybe it is too simple for our intellect that we may act like the greeks or we may seek signs like the jews to believe but christ calls us this morning to put our trust in the message of the cross so that we may be saved and experience the power and the wisdom of god the wisdom and power of god are most clearly revealed in the weakness and the foolishness of the cross may god truly help us to believe in jesus to appropriate the salvation that he has given us and experience the forgiveness that he offers us through the cross may god bless each one of you let us pray father we give you thanks that the wisdom and power of god 
are most clearly revealed in the weakness and foolishness of the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you reminded us once again that Jews look for signs, Greeks think of it as foolishness. But we pray, Lord, that you teach us to trust in you in the cross where you died for us. We thank you that through the cross you have defeated Satan and sin and death and all the principalities and powers. Thank you that you've given us a living hope that is kept in heaven for us. So bless us, help us to stand firm and help us to keep our eyes fixed on you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.